What's up, YouTube? Graven Arlene here, and we are, well, you are on crunch for New York Comic Con. Ah, two more weeks. I can't, I can't handle the pressure at this point. Which also means I'm kind of on crunch, too, because I am helping. <laughs> he has to do a lot while I'm half hour away in my own home doing with my own stuff. Yes. And then you're left with a to-do list when I leave. Yes. <laughs> do you enjoy the to-do list that I give you? Oh, immensely. <laughs> Anyways, now the really the last piece we have here left to do is the armor, which is kind of important to the entire cohesiveness of the Honey Lemon battle outfit. We have a battle plan for it. We do. Yes. Because I'm too heavily organized when I start getting anxious. Let's get to work. Yay! All right, my lovely peeps. Uh, so honestly, what we did to create a little prototype template here was we honestly, I just cut out a space for my neck, cut out a space for my, underneath my shoulders. We put it over on top of me and then we just kind of figured out where we need to cut these two slits. We, we had to do a couple of different tries. Um, and then essentially what we're going to do is be able to overlap them so that we do get this uh bump for my curve and then it goes back to flat again against my stomach um so then when we go over like that we can just cut off the full triangle and contact cement them together so again this was just the prototype version because we have a whole bunch of different cuts in here i took another piece of foam still three millimeters, uh, traced out, made a few different uh, edits to make sure that we cut it out right. And you can always make your circle smaller and then you can make the cuts bigger if you want to have like a larger neck hole or a larger shoulder or arm hole later. But you can't exactly make them smaller after the fact. So I just made them much, much smaller and we can adjust accordingly. Uh, and I also folded the foam in half so that it'll be exactly the same on both sides. So now I've already traced it, I'm just gonna cut the seams I've already made and then put it up against me and test and see where if any other changes need to be made. can really see with that lighting but this clearly has a bust yes it does yay four to six days later all right party peeps so i just had to redo this for the third time now um here's the uh, last one we made uh i undid the slit cuts that we did here because I actually want to make them taper in even more than the way we did. And then we realized as we were trying it on that there was some uh, popping of uh, more material at the to, on top of the armpits area. So I need to figure out exactly how to cut in order to get that to stop from happening, which 
takes a couple tries. You can see I made like three different cuts here. Um, so after doing that, I decided to finding the correct way to cut it. I retraced it and then traced the cuts that I've decided on. So these two are the same. It's essentially at a point above and below uh, a good portion of my chest that will be protruding. So, and then I cut these at 45 degree angles and made sure that they are perfectly symmetrical down the middle. And so now we're going to repeat the process of overlapping these two sides and then on top of that overlap these two sides. And to make it a little bit easier, I've actually brought my dress form. So we're going to put this on the dress form, uh, which we have adjusted to be at my measurements. And then we're going to actually do the contact cementing to hopefully get this the shape that we need. So let's move to that. It looks like a bat. I'm Batman. <laughs> okay, so from what you guys- Where is he? From what you guys saw on the table, we've now pinned it onto my dress form here, which we, like I said, we adjusted to my measurements. Now is the fun part of actually contact cementing. We figured seeing it on the form will make it a little bit easier to see how it'll lay uh, instead of trying to have it on a moving, breathing body. Uh, so I've measured it out. It is still going to be an inch and a half of kind of take in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once we have that in, we can kind of measure out how much of the overlap we need here as well. But like even just holding it there, it just, it forms so nicely. Mm -hmm. can understand exactly how happy I am about this at the moment like this is especially compared to the first two prototypes this is leaps and bounds so we finally found out the trick on how to make a proper chest plate for me that's super simple very sleek I kind of wish we could make a couple copies of this actually <laughs> so we could do this over and over and over again crap we didn't think that through well, I know what I'm doing later. <laughs> so we totally forgot to film any sort of explanation of what I am doing here and just kind of jumped into finishing the project because we were exhausted from quite a long day and just the entire ramp up to this. So I took the same pattern that we used to trace out the front piece and I'm now using it to create the back piece with some extra modifications. We're only going to do two slits at the bottom, not the 45 degree angles ones from my shoulders, and the place for my neck will be a smaller circle. Otherwise, it's the exact same process as we did for the front.
six more days later. Good, you guys can see this with the contrast and lighting. But what I did is I just cut out some basic shape ovals that seem to fit the right size over her chest. Uh, and then similar to what we did here, I just cut two slits at 45 degree angles, overlapped them so they look pinched. Uh, the reference photo we have, they look pinched on the sides as well. Very similar and it just kind of overlays actually quite nicely. We just need to contact cement that down on both sides. It was very hard trying to get them even, but I think we did that. Mm. And so now we're just going to throw that on. A few minutes later. Now that we have these on, I uh, let everything kind of set and dry. I want to actually cut out here where it's actually going to lie. A little longer than a few minutes later. Well, I have clearly overstayed my welcome. <laughs> it mm. is late. It is what else? It is 10.30. I'm old. So am I. I'm ready for bed. I gotta drive a half hour. One week later. I'm really proud of how this came out. So, you guys have seen quite probably a drastic change since the last take we did. Uh, we added these shoulders, uh, which all we did was cut out these big old circles, uh, kind of found their pivot points and put magnets there so it'll actually be able to move up and down. Put this nice decorative circle on the corner so it, it actually kind of covers it up, makes it look a little bit more like a seamless pivot point. Uh, and then the other thing we did was uh, put on the neck piece, which, uh, can you give me the green? Oh, accident, put it in here. Okay. Good place for it. So, <laughs> anyway, so this was kind of our test piece. Essentially, we just cut out a very long strip, and then I didn't cut out triangles. I just did slits all the way around, one, one, one inch apart, uh, of in about an inch in as well uh, that way the foam could easily curve uh, and then I painted the top of the collar portion the bottom of the chest plate and then just lined them up so that they moved underneath uh, that's probably not the best way to describe it but it's essentially like that so you just want to make sure you have that space for the indentations to curl out so they have the spacing and it'll mm -hmm. be able to curve appropriately uh, and then we cut it in half, so half of it is glued to the front and the other half is glued to the back. And they line up quite nicely. We magneted everything together. Oh, this, yeah. Do, do you want to explain? We decided not to film the magnet part. Um, the past couple times we've been working on this, we've just been in a frantic rush. And no offense to you guys, but filming kind of cuts into the productivity. <laughs> A little bit. So it was just kind of laser focus, and that's why we're doing the recap now. But so there was a magnet issue. Make sure when you're putting on magnets, they are facing the correct way. Listen, ICP said it the best, and you know, apparently I just followed suit. It's not that hard. Anyways, we fixed most of the magnet issues. Uh, so. Like I, uh, these shoulder pieces are held on by magnets so they can pivot. I just love how nicely they just pop right off. Uh, and the side pieces are held on by magnets so they just snap right together. And it also, also makes it easier for me to take it on and off myself. So I don't need that extra help, but <laughs> extra help is always appreciated when putting your stuff together. Uh, and then up here on the shoulder portions, we also put magnets, however, because when you're rotating your shoulders a lot, they're going to pop off. The and way the magnets were originally put on, it was, we covered each side with as thin as we could get it, one millimeter foam, but because of the position and everything, like, here it would hold okay. Like, it would hold, but it wouldn't hold as well as down here, because what we did was we did the one millimeter on one side and then just the magnet itself on the other because we didn't want the magnets getting too stuck together not so much from the glue but like being too powerful and wound up ripping off one side so the one millimeter foam is kind of a uh, barrier a bit it does help with that uh however again because it does weaken the power it wasn't a great so yeah, especially since we had it on both sides up here so by the neck it was it 
really didn't catch properly. Yeah, so we ended up just putting on Velcro, which is a lot more sturdier, uh, and it's works perfectly fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it, it feels just more secure and comfortable when I'm actually wearing it, uh, which you guys will see eventually in a video of me wearing the whole thing once it's painted. Um, Man, why is there all this oh, and then obviously. <laughs> Oh, and then also we made this, oh, I made this belt super quick, just cut out a strip, and then we're going to put Velcro on the back once it's done, plastic dipped in paint, which James is now in charge of for the next few days, because yep. I can't come back. I have a busy two weeks. Good luck with that. Thanks. He won't stop meowing, so I'm just going to film this with him in frame. It's been about one week since that footage was filmed and it is still currently being painted by James at his workshop. He, here are a few photos of his in progress. It looks so good. Uh, and next week is Comic-Con, so you guys won't see the full reveal until my New York... Stop headbutting the tripod! Sorry, he is so, like, needy right now. As you guys saw in the last video, he's <laughs> in much dire need of some more attention. Uh, and as I was saying, next week is Comic-Con, so that's when you guys are going to see the full cosplay just put together and me out and about just enjoying wearing it. I'm so excited. You guys will hear from me in about two weeks when I get back and I just do a quick little story time recap of my adventures there. Uh, leave a comment below with any of your thoughts, anything you guys think we should have changed, uh, and maybe some characters you might want to see in the future. because. Believe it or not, I already have four uh, characters in mind for next year, uh, and also it'll hopefully be a little bit easier so we won't be in such a time crunch next year. You know the YouTube drill, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys after Comic-Con 2019!